Hi everyone, welcome to Tentazen. We are continuing with our lectures on occlusion. Today is part two. In first part, we discussed what is occlusion. It is the contact relationship of the teeth, which develops through various stages. So, in the permanent dentition, how do we know whether it is good or not by looking at the permanent molars? Yes, that how our maxillary permanent first molar it is aligned with our permanent mandibular first molar. The molar relationship between the two is going to determine the type of occlusion in permanent dentition. But this molar relationship further depends upon the primary dentition. Two factors in primary dentition that is presence of physiological spaces in primary dentition much required so that bigger larger permanent teeth can use those space and can get properly inclined and second thing is the terminal plane relationship that is deciduous maxillary and mandibular second molars how their distal planes are aligned with each other because this distal plane is going to guide the erupting permanent first molars from behind to come into proper molar relationship and the development of proper occlusion so we can say primary teeth are getting changed into permanent dentition in the mixed dentition period so it is also called transition state because major change is happening transition means change is happening here so there are high chances of something to go wrong so there are high chances of development of mall occlusion in permanent dentition if the changes are not proper in the mixed dentition so it is very important to understand the development of occlusion in the mixed dentition period so we have already discussed first and second stages in the first video so today we are going to discuss this third and fourth stage so let's start before starting quickly subscribe to dent and also give a like to this video as i keep making such interesting videos for you so we have already covered first three in occlusion part one so don't forget to watch first so that you can understand the part two in a better Way. so let's first start with the mixed dentition period so it is from 6 to 12 years and what is happening here so the permanent teeth taking the place of deciduous teeth so change is happening so this is also known as transitional stage but this change happens in three different further steps so let's see the first step which is also called early transitional period it is from six to eight years of age so here two major events are happening first is the eruption of permanent first molars that is these permanent first molars depicted here by six they are going to erupt in the mouth second thing that is happening here is eruption of permanent incisors permanent incisors are going to replace the deciduous incisors so those are the first two things which are happening in this period after after that there is intertransitional period not not much is happening already erupted these teeth are continu they continue erupting no significant changes and then comes the second transitional period or late transitional period which is from 10 to 12 years so what will happen here the remaining teeth what are the remaining teeth deciduous canines and deciduous first molar and second molar will be replaced by the permanent canine first premolar and second premolar so here notice that premolars are replacing the deciduous molars so that is the first thing that is happening here in the late period second thing that that is happening here is eruption of permanent second molars so those are the two things happening in the second period what about the third molars they erupt much later but now for now let's see that mixed dentition period is further divided into three stages and we are going to display each period in detail so let's first start with the first period and in first period let's first understand the eruption of permanent first molars so they require two things that is presence of physiological spaces in the deciduous dentition second is the terminal plane relationship now if this terminal plane relationship is flush terminal plane so these erupting permanent first molars will directly go like this straight and they will end up into end to end molar relationship but we need different kind of molar relationship for good occlusion so how will that be achieved now that will be achieved when these molars will move forward in the mesial direction so how these move they will move forward they will utilize these spaces which are present in the primary dentition they will put the pressure on the teeth and they will move forward so that we can say that this is happening by the use of the spaces present in primary dentition so in the mesial direction they are moving second thing is with the forward growth of mandible this mandible is also growing in the forward direction so more space becomes available so when these two molars they move in the mesial direction and they come into a relationship which is called class one molar relationship what is that that is mesiobuccal cusp mesiobuccal cusp of maxillary first molar it is in line with the mesiobuccal groove of the mandibular first molar so when this mesial shift happens in the early transitional period it is called early mesial shift of permanent molars very very important short note for you so you can be asked what is the mesial shift of permanent molars so one is early and one is late which we are going to discuss in the late transitional period so that happens if the physiological spaces are not present here so molars will remain in end to end relationship till the late transitional period and in late transitional period more space becomes available which we'll get to know and then they will shift into class one molar relationship so we'll discuss what is late now that is ideal that is for class one molar relationship is is established from flush terminal plane but 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 if these two factors are not proper that is something is wrong here what can happen other type of molar relationships can develop so let's see other types so the 
one another is class 2 molar relationship so in this the maxillary tooth is much forwardly placed so its mesiobuccal cusp is not in line with the mesiobuccal groove of mandible but it is forwardly placed then class 3 molar relationship opposite will happen that is mandibular molar is much forwardly placed so mesiobuccal cusp of maxillary is much behind the mesiobuccal groove of mandible so that is called class 3 so we can say that erupting permanent first molars can go into any of these molar relationships so based on that can be the clinical implications let's see how that happens if it is flush terminal plane these erupting permanent molars first will go into end-to-end -end relationship then with the use of spaces and forward growth they will turn into class one molar relationship but if it is mesial step plane already that is already mandible deciduous molar is ahead of the maxillary so erupting permanent first molars now they will already go into the mesial direction so they will directly erupt into class one molar relationship but what if there is more movement of these mandibular first molars that means spaces are available so they will use the spaces so mandibular first molar will move ahead of the maxillary first molar and that will lead to class three molar relationship and then if it is distal step terminal plane that is mandibular molar deciduous molar is already behind it is in the distal direction so what will happen these erupting permanent first molars will also be distal so either they will go into end to end or maxillary first molars will remain ahead and that will lead to class 2 molar relationship so when the maxillary is ahead so that is how the distal terminal plane relationship of deciduous second molars guide the eruption of the permanent first molars help in establishing the proper occlusal molar relationship now let's talk about the second thing that is eruption green incisors in the early transitional period so we can see that let's just open the mouth and see these are the primary incisors they are much smaller than the permanent incisors which will replace them in maxilla they are coming from palatal side in mandible they are coming from lingual side so they require more space than that is available so this extra space that is required which is liability on these incisors is known as incisor liability that is another important short note for you so incisor liability how do we calculate it mesiodistal dimension of permanent incisors so if we take this mesiodistal dimension and minus the mesiodistal dimension of primary incisors so which is less it will lead to extra space that is required so in maxilla it is 7 mm and in mandible it is 5 mm it can be variable according to different texts so that is the amount of incisal liability so that is how it is calculated so now how this space will become available so initially when these permanent incisors will erupt they will be crowded because space is not there but they will get space from these three sources first is already present the physiological spaces that is the first space that they will use second is these incisors will not be like their primary incisors they will be proclined that is they are directed in the forward direction so let's see if we just rotate this mandible and just look at these incisors from the top from 90 degree angle so these are the mandible primary incisors so we'll be looking at the primary incisors they are the incisal edges and the permanent incisors if you look at them the so they will be proclined that is they will be inclined in the labial direction because of which more space becomes available so this can be understood better by this diagram so if we are looking at the mandible from the side so the, if these are the primary incisors which are vertically positioned and these are the permanent incisors so they will be more labially inclined proclined in the forward direction because of which this more space becomes available that is the second third is by the increase in the intercanine width so the width bit of the jaw between canine to canine it increases during the mixed dentition period so more space becomes available so those are the three sources how this incisor liability is taken care of now we come to the intertransitional period so not much is happening here but the permanent canines which are going to erupt in the second phase they have already started their journey though they are inside the bone but they start to do something which is going to result into a special interesting condition let's see that what is happening so these erupting canines they apply the pressure on the apices apex or the roots of the lateral incisor so they are within the jaws and they have put pressure on the lateral incisor roots because of which what will happen these lateral incisor roots will turn into mesial direction they will be displaced mesial in the mesial direction because of which their crowns will go into opposite direction that is in the distal direction and these lateral incisors in turn will put this pressure on the roots of central incisor so what will happen the central incisor crowns will also go in the distal direction now what is happening here this much thing which we can see in the mouth now what is visible we can see a space in the center between the these teeth which is known as midline diastema so at this age this is called ugly duckling stage because child looks ugly because of these crooked teeth but 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 later 
at later stage when the canines are erupted in the mouth they have come inside the mouth they have taken their position so midline diastema is closed the space is closed and incisors are realigned into their position that this stage this entire thing is also known as broadband phenomena as broadband described it and it is also called ugly duckling stage because child looks ugly so that can be important short out for you so let's see what are the other features so it is a transient mall occlusion transient means it is temporary it's not going to stay forever and then it is where it is seen it is seen in maxillary anterior region remember maxillary in maxillary canines and in anterior region at the age of 8 to 9 years or in some texts it's given 8 to 12 years so those are important viva questions then which, which teeth it corresponds to with the erupting permanent maxillary canines that is important viva question because of erupting canines and then it is self-correcting that is important term which is used with it it is self-correcting that is itself will go away so it is transient so sometimes your parents and child may come to you they may be anxious that child is looking ugly something is to be done but you have to assure nothing has to be done because it will get corrected itself in late transitional stage now let's see the late transitional stage so the two events let's first discuss already from the flush terminal plane our first permanent molars are in end-to-end -end relationship but they did not get the physiological spaces were not there so now what will happen now the deciduous canine first molar and second molar will be replaced by their permanent counterparts but what if we are looking at the dimensions of these permanent teeth it is much less than the dimension of the deciduous teeth so this extra space which becomes available because of this change of teeth is known as leeway space of nans and that can be another important short note for you so this space this is there because of the difference in the combined mesiodistal dimension of primary canine first molar and second molar so minus the combined mesiodistal dimension of permanent canine first premolar and second premolar so this extra space this difference is leeway space. how much is it it is 1.8 millimeter total in maxilla right so here we are looking at right side but it also be there on the left side so 0.9 mm on each side total 1.8 mm and mandible it is more it is more than maxilla it is total is 3.4 millimeter and each quadrant 1.7 millimeter those can be your viva questions now what is the significance of this extra space now are these permanent first molars will take this opportunity and now they are end to end but they will go into move mesially in the mesial direction use this space and will come into class one molar relationship so that is the significance that use of these spaces to come into class one molar relationship by the permanent tooth and because it is happening in the late transitional period in the mesial direction so it is called late mesial shift of permanent molars that can be part of your short note that is mesial shift of permanent molars where you can also also discuss the early shift that is happening in the early period so mandibular molars normally move more mesially as compared to the maxillary because more space is there after that the second thing that is happening in the second transitional period is eruption of permanent second molars which are coming from behind so ideally they should come after the eruption of premolars because if they will come before that that will lead to the shortening of the arch perimeter and there will be development of mole occlusion now we come to the permanent dentition period so here it is 12 years and beyond all teeth are there except the third molars which will come much later so let's see the chronology timing of eruption which can be important so first permanent tooth to come that is very important viva question is mandibular first molar permanent mandibular first molar along with the mandibular central incisor then mandibular lateral incisor which can be at the same time as maxillary central incisor and then maxillary lateral incisor so those that, that is happening in the first transitional period that is eruption of permanent first molars and incisors after that what will happen canines and premolars will come now there is a little difference for mandible the canines will come first and then premolars whereas for maxilla canine will come later after the premolars after that we have the eruption of the permanent second molars and finally the third molars now what is the sequence of eruption we already know the sequence so for maxilla permanent first molar central incisor lateral incisor and then if we see the sequence of canine may be little different either it can come after the premolars or it can come in between the premolars after that we have second molar and third molar so those can be the common sequences for maxilla what about mandible in mandible it is more simple it is same six one two three four five seven eight or it can be the canines may come before premolars or it may come between two premolars so those can be asked in viva now what are the characteristics of dentition so they also show overlap that is overjective 
horizontal distance that is 1 to 3 millimeter and overbite that is vertical overlap between the teeth is there that is 1 to 2 millimeter then intra arch tooth contacts are there that is within the same arch teeth contact and with the opposite teeth they occlude with each permanent tooth occlude with two permanent tooth from the opposite arch but exceptions are there maxillary third molar and mandibular central incisor they have only one counterpart that is they contact only one tooth from the opposite arch that can be your viva question now angulations are shown by these permanent teeth whereas primary teeth were more vertically positioned but permanent teeth show mesiodistal as well as buccolingual angulations then arch curvatures so if we look at the arch there is a direction from anterior posterior direction as well as from buccolingual direction three compensating curves curvatures are seen that is curve of speak curve of wilson and curve of mons uh, which can be a short note for you so we are going to discuss separately in separate video so we have already discussed the summary of first three stages in previous video now let's discuss the summary of mixed dentition and permanent dentition mixed dentition is divided into three periods in the first or early transitional two events are happening that is change of flush terminal plane of deciduous to class one molar relationship of permanent it is happening in early period so it is called early mesial shift second thing that is happening here is extra space is required for the permanent incisors which because they are replacing the smaller primary incisors so this extra space that is required is called incisal liability so eruption of molars and eruption of incisors then intertransitional period not much changes are happening but erupting canines within the jaws can lead to a midline diastema which is called ugly duckling stage then second transitional or late transitional period leeway space of nans becomes available because of the difference in the mesodistal dimension of the primary teeth and the permanent teeth which are replacing them and now these permanent first molars will, will move mesial direction use this space to come into class one molar relationship and that is called late mesial shift of molars so those can be the two mesial shifts and now we come to the permanent dentition so permanent dentition can show these characteristics and the chronology and sequence you have to know so now let's see what have you learned so mixed dentition period is divided into further what three periods shift of permanent first molars if it is by the use of physiological spaces in early transitional then what it is called and if it is used by the use of leeway spaces in the late transitional then what it is called inside the liability how much it is in maxilla and how much it is in mandible similarly how much is leeway space in maxilla and mandible and finally the ugly duckling stage at which age it occurs what corresponds to eruption of which teeth so that is all for this video if you enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning keep smiling good luck for your exams see you in the next video on occlusion soon till then take care bye bye